I'm wondering if you indulge in worrying, and if you do, how often do you do it? When you worry, are you also overeating? If so, today, I am here to help you with this habit. Hello, my friend. I'm Cookie Rosenblum, your master weight loss coach and author, and I'm here to help you stop overeating. This is episode 282, Why Worry Makes You Eat. Be sure to get my free training, How to Stop Overeating in Three Steps, at weightlossmadereal.com slash three steps, the number three, because you need to stop overeating first if weight loss is your goal. All right, let's dive into the session today all about worry. So first, we're going to talk about what worry is and what emotional eating is and how they come together and why they make you do what you do. Worry is simply a negative emotion, right? And all negative emotions come from negative thoughts. And that means that you're thinking about something in the future in a way that creates apprehension or anxiety or fear. It feels like not knowing the future creates fear that the worst possible outcome is going to happen to you. And it also probably means that you might be one of those people that's not able to be comfortable with uncertainty. And the truth is, in our lives, all future events have some degree of uncertainty. We want to feel secure. We want to know exactly what's going to happen but it's simply not really possible. So when you worry, when you're feeling fear or apprehension about the future, what does it sound like in your head? What does it look like for you? You're thinking about something in the future and you feel stuck. You can't stop thinking about it. You start obsessing about all the possible what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? You might worry about things that have yet to happen or what somebody may say or somebody might do, or you might worry or fear that you just can't handle one of the possible outcomes that you're thinking about. Now, you may think that you're just a worrier and that it's a personality trait and that there's nothing you can do about it, but this is not true. Worrying is just a habit of thinking and feeling and then eating that you inadvertently learned and it can be unlearned. Remember that most of our habits started out because we thought they were helpful to us. We were trying to do what we could to feel good. But in the end, lots of habits that start off feeling good stop giving us that security that we need. When you worry, and you create stress for yourself, your adrenal glands release a hormone called cortisol. And that hormone increases your appetite and it increases your desire to eat sugary or salty or fatty foods. Now, when we talk about this, we know that you're not turning to food during these times because your stomach is empty and you have a physical need to eat. It's just your brain telling you that you might be facing a dangerous situation, so you should eat to prepare yourself. We know that this is an old wired response in our brains from the days when we face constant, real, life-threatening events. Now, thankfully, most of those types of events are not real. They're mostly in our minds. Some of the results of over-worrying might be that your sleep is disrupted, or you might have trouble focusing and getting things done. You might feel tension in your body or experience headaches or an upset stomach. And remember, that's the mind-body connection that we frequently talk about here. There are so many good reasons to undo this habit of the emotion of worry itself and the habit of soothing yourself from the worry with food that's excess, food that your body doesn't need. So how does this habit come about? It's not an overnight thing. 
Your brain is wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Worry is an uncomfortable emotion. When we feel it, it's natural that we don't like that feeling and we want to soothe ourselves. So we want to avoid the uncomfortable feeling of worry. We turn to food because it's so available and it's pleasurable and it distracts us from whatever our brains are conjuring up to worry about. And yes, you do get some temporary relief. A habit is something that you learn to do that initially gives you a reward. It feels like a solution and you practice it until it becomes a part of you, until it becomes an automatic response. But remember, you're feeling worried, not because of what's happening, but because of what you're thinking about it. There are all kinds of situations out there in your world, but it's your interpretation of them that creates your feeling. And if you have thoughts that whatever's out there, you can't or won't be able to handle it, then you can imagine that your emotion is going to be pretty uncomfortable. The habit you're creating when you eat from the feeling of worry is that you're connecting a feeling with an action, feeling worry and eating, instead of feeling hunger, a physical feeling, a physical sensation, and then eating. You're linking two things together that don't belong together. And then it becomes very easy to do it again and again and again. And of course, this is true with so many other negative emotions, fear, stress, anger, and also with positive emotions when you're not hungry, you're feeling good emotionally, and you might link it to indulge in celebratory eating. Is that you? Your feeling and your eating can also become linked together when you're triggered by the memory of something that's not even happening right now, maybe a past trauma. And when your memory of that trauma is triggered, you're going to suddenly feel a strong desire to eat. Now, we talked about what it looks like in your mind, your thoughts when it's happening, and your feelings. What does it look like in relation to how you're eating? We're talking about overeating, eating when you aren't hungry or starting when you're hungry, but going on until you're eating more than you need, going on beyond enough. You might have sudden cravings for specific foods that feel really urgent, like I've got to get some chocolate right now. You're being led to eat not by an empty feeling in your stomach, but by an uncomfortable emotion. And this is the definition of emotional eating. And worry, in this case, is the emotion. Usually, if you're paying attention to your body, hunger comes up in a really gradual way. But in the case of eating from the emotion of worry, you'll think about a situation and those thoughts will come up suddenly, creating an uncomfortable feeling, that worry feeling, and you'll suddenly get the brilliant idea that you should eat something. Now, you know it's not really a brilliant idea, but it is you trying to soothe yourself. You're not trying to sabotage yourself. You're just trying to feel better. You're trying to overcome the negative feeling. And when you have this sudden craving, it's usually not a beautiful salad that you're craving. It's foods that are usually sugary or salty or fatty like sweets or chips or pizza or ice cream. Now, it's not helpful. You may think that worrying will help you. You may think that if you worry, you'll be protected, that you have to worry so that you're prepared for the future because your thinking is, how else will you be able to deal with what's coming? That scary unknown, right? But worry is not really necessary. It doesn't change or fix things that are ahead of you. It just keeps you focused on potential negative outcomes. You turn them over and over in your mind without really changing anything. And how could you change anything 
because worry is about things that have not happened yet. This whole cycle isn't helpful because it's not allowing you to experience a full range of emotions that you were designed to handle without acting on them. It distracts you from the future situation you're thinking about. So if there were something that you could do about it, you won't be able to access a solution because your mind will be focused on the eating. Now, why is this a negative? What does it cost you? When you eat without hunger from worry or any other emotion, you weren't hungry to begin with. When you eat and you're not hungry, guess what? You're not going to hear a distinct signal to stop. So of course, eventually the price you may pay for practicing this habit is creating extra weight on your body and frustration with yourself that that extra weight will lead you to. You lose confidence in yourself because you just don't know how to manage your emotions. You think the worry is just something that comes upon you and it happens to you and you have no say in the matter. You think about that potential event so much that you lose your connection with the people and things in your life in that present moment because you're overly focused on the future on something that hasn't even happened and may not happen. If you're a frequent worrier, you may be exhausted from the constant worry as your brain scans your life and your relationships, your finances, the state of the world, things that other people may say or do, and it interprets them as a threat that something bad is about to happen. And your brain goes to town focusing on all the what-if possibilities. You don't usually question those worries and thoughts. You just jump right on them and go to them about what the future holds. And you're conditioned to believe that the only way you can escape is by eating. So you can see what you've been doing. You can see where it comes from and what it looks like, right? You can also see the effect that it may have on your life, on your overall happiness, and on your body. The question is, do you want to continue to be a worried eater? Let's just pause for one minute and address what you might be thinking. What if the future threat that you are worrying about is real? Now, here's what I want you to ask yourself. Is it real? Or is it just a possibility? Is it something that's probable or possible? If it's probable, you're going to want to have all your brain power available to help you figure out a real solution to a real threat to deal with it. If it is real, then a certain amount of worry or thinking ahead might be useful if it motivates you to deal with something versus avoid dealing with it until it gets real and staring you in the face. But let's assume that your brand of worrying is more the habit of obsessing about the what ifs and wasting your precious current time. I'm going to assume that if you're here and you're a regular listener, your answer is no. This is not what you want to continue to do to be a worried eater. Your answer is that you'd probably love to get out of this habit. So how do you go about doing that? Here are some ideas on how to deal with your worry habit and disconnect it from food. So first, know that learning about your emotions is complex. For today, I want you to just take in this information as a big picture understanding of what you've been doing and see if you identify with what I'm saying. Are you indulging in the habit of worrying about all the things that could happen? And then are you indulging in overeating as a false coping method? Just start to recognize if you see yourself as a worried eater. 
I know that you may be thinking that eating works for you. Worried eating may calm you down. But even if that's what you think, you need to know that worried eating is a very temporary solution that you know inside doesn't last. And it leaves you with an additional thing to worry about. And that is that extra weight. Once you see the big picture pattern of what you've been doing, I want you to start to notice it when it's happening and call yourself out on it. Say to yourself, I'm feeling worried right now because I am thinking blank. When you do that, you connect your feeling of worry with what you're thinking. It will help you see why you feel the way you do. So you won't feel so helpless. It will also help you stand back and see the story that your mind is creating and where the worry comes from. Sometimes just seeing that you're the creator of it will feel like a bit of relief versus thinking that this is really an outside threat. And then say to yourself, I am human and I'm experiencing a human emotion. It doesn't feel good but I can see where it's coming from and I can handle it. And then, and only then, should you take action with some of the ideas I'm going to give you now. Understanding what's going on in your mind, it's always the first thing you should do. And after that, here are some of the things our Freedom Group members do to deal with uncomfortable emotions without turning to food. We feel it, We define it, and then we can do different things so that we don't act the way we think is necessary, like eat. You can use the five D's worksheet that we often use in the Freedom Group. So if you're a member and you're listening, don't forget to check that out on the resources page. You can use that worksheet to give yourself time to insert a pause between the emotion you're feeling and your habit of eating when you're not hungry. You can do a thought download and get all those worrisome thoughts out of your head and onto paper so you can more objectively see them and decide if you really need to do anything at all right now. This is where journaling can really help. You can use the hunger scale to check in and see if your body is really ready to eat or if this is just part of your old worry habit. Because if you are ready to eat, eat and deal with the thoughts that you're having. You can take a walk to change your environment and clear your head. You can call a friend or ask someone for support to talk about what you're worried about. You can use a free app version of Calm or Headspace to do just a short meditation slow your breathing down and slow your mind down so you again can see what's happening. You can indulge in a hobby that you enjoy like reading or a few minutes of stretching or yoga or playing around with an adult coloring book. Remember this, worried eating is simply a habit and all habits you have do not need to be forever. I hope in the coming week, if you have a worried thought, that you pause and think about this coaching session and see if you can deal with it differently without going to food. All right, my friend, you know what you're going to think about and do this week. Be sure that you've downloaded your most important starting point to stop overeating once and for all. And that is my free training on how to stop overeating in three steps at weightlossmadereal.com slash three steps. This training uses my proven eat, think, love method that I have used to help literally thousands of women use the power of coaching, psychology, and brain science to change how they eat and get the results they want, freedom from the whole struggle. This is my gift to you. For now, this is your Coach Cookie reminding you that as you search for answers, keep it real, just like you, and I will see you next week.